Drilling holes freehand with a Dremel tool can be messy and dangerous, but here my 3D printed torque arm is supporting the weight of the tool and keeping it vertical, easily making parallel holes anywhere on the workbench. Welcome to my 3D printing lab. Let's see how that was done. Torque arms are a common household device, supporting payloads that need to be held in orientation and moved freely in space. My first attempt at a 3D printed torque arm did not have the strength or rigidity required for that application. So I designed a new base with a larger flat bearing to resist twisting and an axial bearing that could be tightened with a screw. I reasoned that would close up any gaps due to tolerance between the printed races and the BBs. That theory turned out to be incorrect. As you can see, the central bearing moves all over the place. I discovered that's because this design doesn't actually resist twisting or moment loads. In fact, twisting the bearing opens up gaps above and below for the BBs, so the whole ring of ball bearings just twists along with it. The whole design had to be scrapped. The challenge of this third design, in addition to some errors in the prints which need to be ground out manually, was making multiple flat bearing races. Smooth, flat surfaces are really only possible on the top surface of the print, so getting top faces everywhere require gluing together the bottoms of two prints. In my previous video, I had allowed the machine screws to deform the plastic to make their own threads. After watching Made With Layers video about threads, however, I decided to switch to tapping some of my screw holes, or sometimes better, adding threads to the 3D models directly. I recommend watching the whole video for more info about using screws and printed parts. The link is in the description. The base now has three bearings resisting different forces and works reasonably well. The new fixed arm, however, is not robust enough. I need to get in the practice of over-designing rather than going for a minimal look. I built a heavier arm for multiple parts that screw together. Two central halves of the arm include a T-shaped insert that holds them in registration and adds rigidity, plus a small pop of color. The base screws down to a wooden platform, using mounting holes accessible through a window in the rotating top. The completed lower stage deflects under a quite high load by about 5 millimeters, which amounts to about 1 degree over the whole length, which is well within the tolerance I'm looking for. The redesigned first stage and the original second stage are brought together for testing. Under close inspection, the newer part reveals the weaknesses in the older one, the second stage vertical axis. These plastic parts just require more structure. Time to over-design again. To reinforce my vertical bearing against moment loads, I added a second BB race with a different diameter. These two races of BBs together act like the rollers in a tapered roller bearing. 
Placing two of them in opposition and adding an especially rigid core on the axis multiplies their resistances together. The final design contains the largest metal part so far, an M8 bolt 8 centimeters long, visible here in the negative space of the 3D model, including the threads. The fixed core contains a bushing that could be shortened to make the tolerances tighter, but that turned out not to be necessary. The 3D printed threads let the parts spin together in a very satisfying manner. This is a great result. The completed assembly works exceptionally well. Putting all my strength into it, I can't shift it at all. It's a small matter to modify the neighboring parts to accept the new one in its place. Although I'm using glue here, I probably wouldn't recommend that going forward. I've found that using somewhat smaller parts that screw together, rather than monolithic prints or glue joints like in the prototype, results in a design that can be modified and iterated more rapidly. The assembled workbench torque arm is ready to test. By adding shims to the Dremel clamp, I was able to get the tool at a consistent 90 degrees to the bench. Putting the arm under tension actually removes a lot of the backlash, which would be a good reason to use stronger springs in a future design. Some viewers were concerned that it would be hard to keep the drill moving straight, but that's clearly not a problem. Once the bit gets started, both stages of the arm are compliant enough to keep the tool centered over the deepening hole, while rigid enough to keep the drill bit vertical. Now let's see what the system can really do.
This device is functional, but with plenty of room for improvement. There's too much flex and backlash, the torsion force needs to be tunable, and it needs a swappable tool head that can be fine-tuned. All issues I hope to address in future versions. Thanks for watching. See you next time.